Здравствуйте! Hello and welcome to Russian language class. Let's have a quick recap of the topics we learned in the previous lesson. If you remember, we had discussed about the prepositions which are used along with the nouns in the genitive case to convey several meanings. The first set of prepositions is у, which means by or near, возле, it also means near or nearby or by, окола, which is near and вокруг, which is around. So, these prepositions are used to denote the location, location of a noun and they are used with the genitive case of nouns. The second set of prepositions are is, sir and the. These prepositions are used to denote movement from or to a place. Is and sir, these two prepositions are used to answer the question atkuda. Is corresponds to the preposition were in the prepositional case and sir corresponds to the preposition na. So, whenever you use were with a noun in the prepositional case, the same noun will take is when answering or while answering the question atkuda. Similarly, if a noun takes were na in the prepositional case, the same noun will take sir while answering the question atkuda and the denotes a movement up to a certain point or up to a certain place. For example, мы едем до вокзала, we are going to the station or up to the station. The and после, as you can see the is here also and the is here also. So, here the means movement up to a point and here the means the time. So, these two prepositions have temporal meanings. So, the means before or until and here post means after. So, these two are antonyms to each other. So, the lexi is before the lecture and post lexi is after the lecture. So, this is about the prepositions. Now, we will discuss about the topics that we are going to learn today. In this lesson, we will discuss about the plural nouns in the genitive case. So, how do plural nouns decline in the genitive case? The declension of plural nouns. So, I have written, I have drawn a table here. As you can see, studient, studient which has a hard ending. How do we decline this noun in the genitive case plural? Studient, studientov. So, we add O and V at the end to get its genitive plural form. Student, student of. This was with the hard ending noun, masculine noun. The second one is Giroi. Giroi ends with a E kratke. So, what happens when we come across a noun with E kratke ending? We replace E kratke with Ye and V. Giroif, Giroif. The third noun I have written here is Vraj. Vraj ends with a consonant here, but there is a rule that whenever we come across a noun with either ch, sh, sh or z at the end, we add ye to get its genitive plural form. So, vraj, vraj ye. So, this, these are the rules that determine the form of the noun in the genitive plural. Apart from these regular nouns, there are certain nouns which have irregular plurals in the nominative if you remember. For example, druk which is nominative singular. What is the nominative plural of druk? It is druzia, druzia and brat. What is the nominative plural? Bratia. So, these two nouns have irregular plural. So, what happens is whenever there is a noun with nominative irregular plural, it will have 
irregular plural in the genitive case also. So, drusia, drusiei, brat, bratia, nominative plural, and bratief. So, druk, drusiei, brat, bratief. One more important thing here to notice the ending of a noun in the genitive plural also depends stress of the plural nominative case. For example, druk, drusia. So, drusia, ya is stressed, which is the ending. If the ending is stressed, we do not write a soft sign here. So, druk, drusia, drusiei. Brat, bratia. So, in bratia, as you can see that bratia, the first syllable is stressed, not the ending. So, if the ending is not stressed, we write soft sign. So, bratief has the soft sign and then yef, which is the ending. So, this is how we form the genitive plural form of nouns. So, let us look at some of the examples. We have already discussed that with the words skolka, we use genitive plural. So, skolka stujanta vashi group pe. Skolka stujanta vashi group pe. How many students are there in your group? So, whenever we answer this question, we have to use a cardinal number. And while discussing the cardinal numbers in the previous lesson, we have discussed that with the cardinal number 1, we use nominative singular. With the cardinal number 2, 3, 4, we use genitive singular. And with the cardinal number ending in 5 onwards and 0, we use genitive plural. So, if you have to say that there are 15 students in our group, how will you say? Vunashi group pe pitnatsa stujyantav. Vunashi group pe pitnatsa stujyantav. In our group, there are 15 students. So, with 15, we have to use the genitive plural of the noun. So, pitnatsa stujyantav. Next question. School ka druziyei uvas maskwe. School ka druziyei uvas maskwe. So, how many friends are there or how many friends do you have in Moscow? So, again, either you can use a cardinal number or you can use the words mnoga. Mala, Neskalka, and with all these words, we use the genitive plural. So, Maskwe, Uminya, Munoga, Druzie. Maskwe, Uminya, Munoga, Druzie. So, there are many friends I have in Moscow. So, as you can see, Druk, Druzie, and Studiant, Studiantov. So, if a noun ends with a hard consonant, we add of. If a noun ends with e kratke, we replace e kratke with yef. If a noun ends with either ch, sh, sh and z, we use ye to make its genitive plural. So, now we will look at the feminine nouns and how do we make the genitive plural of feminine nouns. Now, let us discuss the declension of plural feminine nouns in the genitive case. So, how do plural feminine nouns decline in the genitive case? So, let us first discuss the changes that we do to get the plural nouns in the genitive case of feminine nouns. The first noun I have written here is komnata. Komnata has a ending. So, whenever there is a noun which has a ending, how do we make plural? of that particular noun in the genitive case, we just drop the ending. So, when you drop the ending in this word, what you will get? You will get komnat. So, komnat is the genitive case form of the noun komnata in plural. The next noun is chitraj. Chitraj is notebook. So, it ends with a soft sign. So, whenever you have a noun, feminine noun with a soft sign ending, what do we do? We just drop the soft sign and add ye and e kratke. So, what do we get? Chitraji, chitraj and ye, chitraji. The next ending that we are going to discuss is ea ending. For example, 
auditoria auditoria auditorium so whenever you have a noun feminine noun with ia ending what do we do we replace ya with e kratke so auditoria auditori with e kratke so now there i have written two nouns with a ending and we have discussed that whenever you come across a noun with a ending what do we do we just drop the ending to get its genitive plural form like we have got komnat from komnata but here when you drop the ending a what do you get jevushk so here there is a consonant cluster at the end after dropping the ending here studentk again there is a cluster of consonants at the end so whenever we get a cluster of consonants at the end after dropping the ending we add ye and o between the last and the penultimate consonant to get its genitive plural so here in je vushka we drop the ending first and then we add ye between the last which is k and the penultimate consonant which is sh to get its genitive plural form so what do we get je vushek je vushek similarly here we will add o between the last which is k and the penultimate consonant which is t to get its genitive plural so student ka genitive plural will be student tak so these rules you have to keep in mind while declining the feminine nouns in plural in the genitive case so let's look at some of the examples school ka chitra ji lishit nastalye school ka chitra ji lishit nastalye how many notebooks are lying on the table so school ka after school ka we are supposed to use the genitive plural that is why chitraj has been chitraji dwinath se chitraji so there are 12 notebooks lying on the table aur nastaliye lishit dwinath se chitraji the next example is viznaite school ka student tak na nasham faculty te viznaite school ka student tak na nasham faculty te do you know how many girl students are there in our department so again after school ka we are supposed to use the genitive plural of the noun that is why we have used student tak which is the genitive plural of student ka da yaznayu school ka student tak na nasham faculty te na nasham faculty te 25 student tak so after the cardinal number 25 or 25 we have to use the genitive plural form of the noun so that is how we have answered da yaznayu school ka student tak na nasham faculty te na nasham faculty te 25 student tak next example viznayte school ka auditori na etam etashe viznayte school ka auditori na etam etashe so do you know how many halls are there on this floor etash you know this is floor how many auditoriums or halls are there on this floor auditoria when we decline this noun in the genitive plural it becomes auditori with e krat ke ending so how do we answer this question da yaznayu school ka auditori na etam etashe da na etam etashe pet auditori there are five auditorium or halls on this floor so this is how we decline the feminine nouns feminine plural nouns in the genitive case or feminine nouns in genitive plural so now we will look at the neuter gender nouns in the genitive plural
Now we will look at the neuter gender nouns in the genitive plural. So, how do neuter gender nouns decline in the genitive plural? So, let us look at the rules first. The first noun I have written neuter gender noun is miesta. What is miesta? Miesta is place. So, how do we decline this noun in the genitive plural? We just drop the ending as we have done with the feminine gender nouns. So, what do we get after dropping this ending? We get miest. So, the genitive plural form of miesta is miest. So, whenever you have a noun with o ending, you have to drop the ending to get its neuter gender noun in genitive plural. The next ending is the soft vowel ye. So, if a neuter gender noun ends with a soft vowel ye, how do we get its genitive plural form? We just add e kratke at the end. So, pole, which means field, pole, pole. So, basically, what we are doing? We are adding e kratke at the end. The next ending is e ending. For example, zdanye, zadanye, pridlashenye, uprashnenye, and so on. So, how do we decline the nouns with e ending? in the genitive plural, we replace the ending ye with e kratke. So, zdaniye genitive plural will be zdani with e kratke ending. Similarly, uprashneniye would be uprashneni again with e kratke ending. Now, we have discussed that any neuter gender noun with o ending in genitive plural, it has to drop the ending. We have written here two nouns with o ending. The first one is akno, which means window, and the second one is pismo, pismo is letter. So, when we drop the ending which is o in both these nouns, what do we get? Okn and pism. If you look at it, you will find that again we have a cluster of consonants or consonant cluster at the end. Here also there is a consonant cluster s and m together, here k and n together. So, in these cases what do we do? We add o between the last and the penultimate consonant to get its genitive plural form. So, what do we get after adding o between n and k? Oken. So, oken will be the genitive plural form of akno. Similarly, when we add ye between m and s here, what do we get? Pism. Pism. In pism, one more thing you have to do is you have to drop the soft sign. Pism. So, whenever after dropping the ending, if we get a cluster of consonants, we use either o or ye to get its genitive plural form. So, akno, oken, pismo, pism. Now, let us look at some examples. School ka sloof, vaitam pridla sheni. Sloof is the genitive plural form of slova. Slova ends with o. And we have discussed whenever a noun ends with o, how do we form its genitive plural? We drop the ending. So, in slova, if you drop the ending which is o, we get slof. Skol ka slof, vaitam pridla sheni. How many words are there in this sentence? Vaitam pridla sheni, wo sim slof. There are 8 words in this sentence. So, after 8, you have to use genitive plural. And after skolka, again, we have to use genitive plural. So, this is how we decline the nouns in the genitive plural. I hope you must have understood the rules as well as you must have observed their use in the sentences. So, now we will move on to our next topic. The next topic we have for today is the verbs, the perfective aspects of the verbs 
with the suffix nu. So, there are certain perfective verbs which take nu suffix in order to be used as perfective aspect of the verb. For example, we have already discussed about the verb adhikhat. Adhikhat is to take rest. This is imperfective aspect. Adhikhat is the imperfective aspect. And what is the perfective aspect? Adhaknut. Adhaknut. So, here as you can see, nu is the suffix which has been used to make its perfective aspect. Adhikhat, adhaknut. Similarly, vazvrashat or vazvrashatsya or virnut or virnutsa. Vazvrashat is to return. Virnut is to return. Vazvrashat and virnut, they are, they take the direct objects. So, they are transitive verbs. But if you add sya to them, they become intransitive or reflexive verb. Vazvrashatsa means to return and virnutsa again to return. Again here as you can see we have used nu suffix to make its perfective. Vazvrashat virnut. The third verb ulibatsa. Ulibatsa is to smile. And what is the perfective aspect of ulibatsa? Ulibnutsa. Ulibnutsa. Ulibnutsa again has the suffix nu. Winimat, winimat and winut. Winimat is to take out something. Winimat, winut, and it has again the suffix nu. So this is the. These are the imperfective aspects, and these are perfective aspects of the same verb. Adhikat, vazvrashatsa, ulibatsa, winimat. These are imperfective aspects or ni savar shinni vit and adakhnut, virnutsa, ulibnutsa and vinut, they are savar shinni vit or perfective aspects. So, now the question comes, how do we conjugate the perfective aspects of the verbs with the suffix nu? So, for this purpose, I have written the conjugation of adakhnut and rest of the verbs will have the similar conjugations. So, how do we conjugate adakhnut? Ya adakhnu and the stress is on u which is the ending. Ya adakhnu ti adakhnyosh onana adakhnyot mi adakhnyom vi adakhnyote ani adakhnut. Let us repeat it once again. Ya adakhnu ti adakhnyosh onana adakhnyot me adakh nyom, we adakh nyote, ani adakh nut. So, all the verbs of perfective aspect with suffix nu will have the similar conjugations. Let us come to the past tense of the verb adakh nut. How do we make in the past tense forms? We just remove the ending which is tense of sign and add la, la, lo, and li. So, what do we get after removing tens of sign and adding la, adakh nul, adakh nula, adakh nula with o ending and adakh nuli. So, these are the past tense forms of the verb adakh nuj. So, what about the imperative forms? We have also discussed about the imperative forms. So, how do we make imperative forms? Adakh nut, adakh nuj. Adakhni. Adakhni is the informal and adakhnite. Adakhnite is a formal. So, we are adding e and ite at the end to get its imperative forms. So, this is about the perfective aspects of the verbs with the suffix nu. So, I hope you must have understood the conjugation of the verbs with the suffix nu and how do we make the past tense and how do we make the imperative forms. So, now we will discuss about our next topic. We already know how do we say in numbers in Russian from 0 to 100. 
So, in this lesson we will discuss about the numbers from 200 onwards, how do we say 200, 300, 400 and so on. So, I have written the numbers first and their Russian counterpart. This is 200, 200 in Russian is 200, 200, 300, 300, 300, 400, 400, 400. The stress is on e, chitirista. Five hundred is pit soth, pit soth, pit soth. The stress is on o here. Six hundred is shit soth, shit soth. Seven hundred sim soth, sim soth. Eight hundred vasim soth, vasim soth. Nine hundred is jivit soth. Jivit Sot and thousand is Tisicha. Tisicha. If you look at the numbers from 500 to 900, you will find this is Piat, Shes, Siem, Vosim, and Jevich plus Sot. So, if you know the numbers from 5 to 8 or 9, it becomes very easy to remember about 500 to 800 or 900. 1000 is different is 3 Now comes 1 million. So, how do we say million in Russian? Million, million. So, we basically follow the same system of counting as the Europeans do. And after million, what comes? Billion. So, how do we say billion in Russian? It has two variants. One is milliard and the other one is billion. Milliard or billion. So, now one more important thing like all the other numbers, if you have to use tisicha, million or billion, you have to change their forms. So, if the number ends with 1, we will use the nominative case forms of tisicha, million and billion. So, they will remain the same. If the number ends with 2, 3, 4, we will use Tisichi. So, Tisicha becomes Tisichi, Milliona, Billiona. If the number ends with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 0, we use Tisich, Tisich, which is the genitive plural form of Tisicha. Million of, again, genitive plural form of million or Billion of, the genitive plural of billion. In Russian, we do not say 1 lakh. So, how will you denote or how you say 1 lakh in Russian? It will be 100,000. How do you say 100,000 in Russian? Sto tisich. Why tisich? Because if a number ends with 0, we use tisich. So, this is all we have for today's lesson. So, what did we learn today? We learnt the numbers, cardinal numbers, we learned the suffixes nu in the perfective verbs and we also learned the plural nouns in the genitive case. So, that is all for today. We will meet in the next class. Till then, spasiba dasvidanya.